India is the diabetic capital of the world. 77 million people in India currently suffer from diabetes. This number is going up on a yearly basis. In another 15-20 years, we can expect this number to be double. You yourself have got a 1 in 10 chance of being diabetic through your lifetime. And the dangerous thing is here is that India is primarily a young population and a lot of younger people are coming up and showing diabetes. 1 in 10 is a very large demographic number. If you are Indian, your chances of having diabetes are very, are high. very high. I was requested to make this video by my buddy here. But I was refraining from doing so because this might trigger you in some way. Because it might touch a raw vein. Because India as a country is deeply rooted in culture and customs. Are you sure about that? But I am going to do it anyways. I would like you to watch this video through and through with an open mind. And look at if some of these points may apply to you. Of course, I have no intention of hurting your sentiments. But I would rather like to help you make the changes required so that you are not diabetic yourself. To start with, we think of the average Indian like this. Generally, a muscular lean or an emancipated lean person toiling in the fields or on a roadside job. Get this picture out of your mind. The average Indian is a middle class person and he looks more like this. A busy person who spends 8 to 10 hours at work and another couple of hours on his commute. Always in a hurry and more often than not, a little rotund with a pot belly. With that on the back of our minds, let us also understand that a negative consequence on health is most often not a result of one thing. It is several actions and consequences which lead ultimately to the negative outcome. This lens has got a lot of distortion. Sure, diabetes does have a genetic component. But genetic anomalies are isolated incidents and it is not possible for such a huge chunk of population to have genetic mutations. So there is something definitely at play here besides genetics. And this is exactly what I would like to explore today in this video. But first, what causes diabetes? Most specifically type 2 diabetes. Diabetes itself means that there is an increased amount of glucose in your bloodstream over the normal acceptable limit. Once you have a meal, insulin is secreted by the beta cells of the pancreas, which signals to the target cells, in this case, the cells of the liver, muscles and fat, to uptake the circulating blood glucose, which is obtained from the breakdown of carbohydrates in your food. Insulin binds to the cell wall of the target cells and allows uptake of the glucose into the cells and thereby clearing it from the bloodstream. Lack of efficiency of the insulin binding on the cell wall leads to what is known as reduced insulin sensitivity and therefore elevated blood sugar levels. Unaddressed at this point, this situation progresses where the beta cells of the pancreas lose the ability to produce adequate amount of insulin. The exact mechanism of reduced insulin sensitivity is not well known, but it is hypothesized that it could be due to a chronic state of inflammation and elevated blood sugar levels or a pre-diabetic state is often seen as a precursor to metabolic syndrome X, which includes obesity, hypertension, dyslipidemias, endothelial damage and increased prothrombotic activity. This might give you a clue why the Indian population is more susceptible to diabetes, but it goes a little bit deeper than that. It is more connected with our behaviors. But what do our behaviors influence the most? Just two words, body composition. You are of ideal body weight and yet you have diabetes. First and foremost, check out this idea of ideal body weight. Ideal body weight range is derived from BMI or body mass index. This is a metric for demographics and has no business in healthcare. While it is true that every obese individual will have a high BMI or will be over the ideal body weight range, it does not mean if your BMI is normal, you are of healthy body composition. Okay. Body composition is simply a lean body mass to body fat ratio. Lean body mass constitutes bones, organs, various other tissues, including blood, water and of course, muscle. While body fat is simply stores of excess energy. Your target for fat mass should be not to exceed more than 20% of your body weight as a man. Add about 7% for a woman. So how do you know your body fat percentage? Very difficult to accurately measure. 
but there are a couple of easy indicators. If you find yourself with a larger waist circumference than you'd like, when you look at yourself, you are probably over the 20% mark. There is also another metric you could use, waist to height ratio. Measure your waist in inches and divide it by your height in inches. The result you get should not exceed more than 0.5. The same calculation can be done in centimeters as well. Now we know that type 2 diabetes occurs due to reduced insulin sensitivity due to carrying excess fat mass as compared to lean tissue. How do we carry excess fat? Only through overeating of course. Remember that genetic factors aside, type 2 diabetes is a disease of consumption of excess calories and not of excess sugar on its own. On its own, sugar itself is not very highly calorific. With that in mind, let's explore some of the behaviors that makes us Indians the diabetic capital of the world. And it all starts when we are very young. We begin to build muscle at a very young age. In fact, during adolescence and the rate at which we build muscle grows well into adulthood. We build muscle by providing our bodies with the stimulus. The way we do it naturally is through playing. Isn't this why children seem to be playing all day long when they are young? And what do children in India typically do for most of their day? Our is spelling. O U R. What is spelling? B O D Y. School, tuitions, homework, and yes, their favorite sport, sharing notes. We are setting ourselves out for disaster at a very young age, unknowingly. But when we are young, we obviously do not expect to have type 2 diabetes. But the lack of stimulus and the habits of playing and participating in sports has to be inculcated at a very young age. These habits then carry you into the future and build a base in your adulthood for good health. Today, it is hard to find even a 20 year old boy who can do at least 20 push ups. In most parts of the world, sport is part of the curriculum until the end of the undergraduate courses. In India, the moment you get into the 10th standard, the only sport you are encouraged to play is to share your notes and if lucky, cycle to tuitions. In contrast to India, a lot of countries also have compulsory military training after high school at least for the boys. This further helps with the building blocks to a better body composition. Diabetes, remember, is a disease of overconsumption of calories. But do Indians really overconsume calories? We are after all vegetarian, right? Wrong. I feel we are the real fast food capital of the world. Think about it. Feel like a snack pick a pack of biscuits. Remember, even if though it is mentioned that it is healthy on the packet, it doesn't mean it is low in calories. Healthy here would be just a manner to market. Think further, what is the other idea of a snack? Where I come from, it would be patties, samosas and a battered vada. In Mumbai, it would be vada pav. In Delhi, it might be chole bature. So how long after you order the dish, do you actually receive it on your plate? In seconds, right? Isn't that the definition of fast food? You get it? Fast? How many times have you ordered Chinese takeaways in this week itself? Isn't that fast food? If you think of it deeply, we consume fast food at least once a day, if not more often without exception. We may be vegetarian, but also we over consume calories through habit by eating all these fast foods. As mentioned earlier, exercise for us is just an afterthought. We just don't have it in our culture to dedicate time for physical fitness. In addition, we are not active either. Can you speak English? Fuck you! The situation, I believe, is a little bit better in metros. But in smaller places like where I live, in Goa, we do not have public transport. So everyone is dependent on cars and bikes to get them right to the doorstep of their destination. In fact, there is a direct correlation between the lack of mass transit and incidence of diabetes. It is not surprising then that the rate of diabetes is highest in Goa amongst all the states in India at 26%. In other words, if you are going, you are more likely than not to suffer from diabetes in your lifetime. I reiterate that I do not believe that the high rate of diabetes is directly correlated to genetics. However, South Asians at a population level do have a high predisposition for trunkal obesity, which means we more than other populations tend to store fat around the abdomen. We are of shorter stature, which reduces our lean body mass and this along with faulty dietary habits and inactivity results in fat deposition around the abdomen. The chances of getting diabetes increases exponentially with the amount of fat around the abdomen. Checking your blood sugar is about the easiest and cheapest biochemical test you can run. 
It can be done in the lab or with a glucometer. Yet people do not check often enough due to the lack of awareness of how common the disease is. Also, who needs the bad news? A vast majority of diabetes cases we diagnose are chance discoveries in individuals in their early to mid 40s who come in for unrelated complaints. Sometimes the blood sugars are so high that the damages of untreated diabetes have already set in. We need to change this trend now. We have a young population and we cannot have so many of them diabetic. We need to have a holistic approach to health as a whole. To stop this cascade of diabetic cases, we have to first help ourselves and ensure that we are proactive. Don't be that person who is eternally chasing weight loss. Look to improve your body composition. If one is very obese, losing weight may be the best and fastest way to improve your chances with diabetes. But in the longer term, it is about improving and maintaining your body composition. Move more. Look for the slightest opportunity to go for a walk. Walking here will not be exercise, but just increased activity. Train both to get stronger and improve your cardiovascular health and make this part of your habits in the long term. Training need not be hard. Training for health benefits just takes a little bit of work consistently to reap maximum benefits. Restrict your calories by being aware of what you eat and above all, encourage your children to do the same. And don't forget to test as often as possible.